And in 5D, we don't need to do it that way anymore. In 5D, what happens is we say to someone, you know what, I'm very interested in the sale, but I want to make sure you're happy too. And that's happening everywhere we go. That's happening for lots of people and lots of experiences. And that's a way you know you're in 5D. Cue music. Places, everybody places. We're starting in three, two. It's time for Life Interrupted Radio, a show dedicated to practical skills for your mind, body, and soul. We're hoping we'll go in one ear and stay there. Here's the host of the show, Sharon Saylor. Welcome to the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio, where we look at the rise of autoimmune disorders. The NIH estimates nearly 24 million Americans have an autoimmune disorder. To put that in perspective, cancer affects about 9 million and heart disease up to 22 million. You'll be as surprised as I was to find out what autoimmune entails. I brought together top experts that range from doctors, specialists, nutritionists, researchers, and even those recovering from autoimmune to bring you the latest, most up-to-date information about autoimmunity and how to live your life uninterrupted. So let's get started. Welcome, everyone, to the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio. I'm your host, Sharon Saylor from SharonSaylor.com. And as always, it's my pleasure to be with you here Friday night, every Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. As well as I want to share a really cool new thing that we're doing over at LifeInterruptedRadio.com. It's called the Transcribe Tribe. Now, we've done over 130, 140 episodes already. They're not all transcribed yet, but go over, sign up for the Autoimmune Hours Transcribe Tribe, and you'll be able to get transcriptions. And if you don't find one that you're looking for, just drop us a note there on the website, and we'll be sure and get that one up in the top of the queue. So join us over at lifeinterruptedradio.com, Transcribe Tribe. And oh my goodness, I've got a great new chai tea. I was working up in New York a couple of uh, days ago and found a fantastic tea shop up there and got a great chai tea, so I'm enjoying that tonight. What are you curled up with tonight? I hope it's something really interesting and fun because I'll talk about interesting. I've got a topic we've never talked about. It's I found it fascinating when Marines St. Germain was introduced to me. She talks about the Akashic Records. I hope I'm saying that right, but we'll get her to confirm that for me. And she has a lifelong interest in the Akashic Records, resulted in her being granted access to this dimension that has been off limits of most of, of humanity for millions of years. She is founder of the Akashic Records International and is an extremely accurate Akashic Records guide and instructor. Her newest book, Waking Up in 5D, provides tools and teachings to guide you in the transition from the polarized mindset of the third dimension to the joy and love of fifth dimension vibrations. We'll talk about more about her new book and all of this, but I want to get her on so we have plenty of time to chat with her about this fascinating topic and how it relates to healing. And I always say here, we're thrivers, not survivors. So welcome, Maureen. Thank you for being on the Autoimmune Hour. Thank you for having me. You know, and it's so interesting because I am, like your listeners, a survivor of autoimmune disease and I did not get any help from allopathic medicine, and I cleared it out myself. You know, I have said all along, I am glad at the first uh, for the diagnosis and at the height of it that I had all types of advice and education available to me to sort it out for myself. I did uh, take advice from many, many different sides and was able to create my own healing pattern that worked for me. I always say that we're all individuals, and it really is fascinating to me how <laughs> it's hard sometimes to get understand one size does not fit all <laughs> in so many things, including our healing. So first, uh, tell us, I hope I pronounced that right, but uh, what are the Akashic Records? The Akashic Records are the field of knowledge that represents all that is, all that has occurred in the reality. It includes possible realities and probable futures. Think of it as a library that you might go to where you ask the reference library about something and she pulls out a ton of books, but you don't get to take any of them home. 
the Akashic oh. Records were created by very high beings who felt it was appropriate to make the information available for, to source. And at a certain point, it was decided that humans could have access because we're on the final stretch to a new level of expression. Wow. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. I wasn't aware of that. It's fascinating to me that, how this all came about. But let's just dive right into it. You have a new book about waking up in 5D. First off, let's just talk about the title as like waking up in 5D. Explain to us waking up from what and what is 5D? All right. So everybody's familiar with 3D and a lot of people think 4D is time and it's not. 5D is the zone or the vibrational uh, experience where you are in a place of love, compassion, and you're in a place where things don't bother you. There's no polarity. It's what a lot of our traditions would teach us is heaven. And we are actually bringing our divine self, the part of us that is connected to the divine, anchoring it into our physical bodies and becoming fifth dimensional. That process is the bringing in of the divine. And I have a great story. That oh, I can share. Tell. Yeah, absolutely. Share. So, um, the story is about a man that I worked with many years ago, and he was telling us at the office, all the people, he was like the boss, he was telling all the employees that he had just sold his hot car, and his car was a yummy, you know, kind of car that the guys drive when they have lots of money. And that, that was the good news. The bad news was he got a lot less for it than he had hoped because it was his son who purchased it and had talked him out of selling it for the price he wanted. And the son convinced him to sell it for the price the son wanted it for. So as he's telling the story, you know, he's being very rueful. And I just looked at him and I said, Ray, just think how happy you would have been if your son had gotten that deal from someone else. Nice reframe. <laughs> and so what happened is he looked at me, his eyes got really big and he burst out laughing. And in 5D, we don't need to do it that way anymore. In 5D, what happens is, we say to someone, you know what, I'm very interested in this deal, but I want to make sure you're happy too. And that's happening everywhere we go. That's happening for lots of people and lots of experiences. And that's a, a way you know you're in 5D. So we're sliding between third and fifth quite regularly. And that's how you can begin to notice that you're in 5D. Oh, is, is that, how does that relate to this concept, a business concept of creating win-win for everybody? Exactly. It's a match. Oh, okay. And that's one of the things you notice. I didn't say that's right. I said it's a match because one of the things that I have in the book is, is to choose your language. And instead of using right and wrong, good and bad, which are polarity based words, instead you pick words that don't have a bias. They don't have a uh, charge. They don't have a pejorative. They're simply defining something without all those extra baggage pieces. And as a, as, a, as a teacher of all of this, I'm sure you really appreciate it. So I said, that's a match. That's what happens in 5D. Absolutely. Words have meaning. <laughs> and I'm <laughs> all about understanding language softeners and choosing your words. I, I like in the little story of when a coach or consultant or someone says, I did it to them. And I said, you did it with them. And people look, and sometimes it takes a moment for that understanding that are you doing something to someone or are you doing something with someone? Totally different meaning. So I appreciate that. Sometimes we have to tell our medical professionals that, uh, remind them that as well. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and see, the thing is that what happened to me as I began being more aware of this, and I have lots of explanations on how I became aware of it, but for the moment, you have to take my word for it. I can tell you, you know, like how that happened. But one of the things that I became aware of is that certain words would make me very uncomfortable. And they were just words that everybody else uses. You know, like when someone uses swear words and you're not comfortable with that, you, you feel a little agitated or uncomfortable. Well, I was feeling that way about everyday words that people were using. And that's when I realized, wait a minute, there's a language here. And I've got a list of words. I want to share a couple of them. 
Great. So um, one of them is uh, I have to. I have to pick up the kids at daycare. I have to meet my husband. I have to go here. I have to run to the airport. All of that is not true. And when we use the have to word, it plugs us into mass consciousness. And then we get pulled along with masses rather than claiming our power and claiming our identity. Now, there's nothing wrong with doing what everybody else is doing, except that it takes away our power because we're not claiming that we have a choice. So I'm choosing to pick up the kids on time because they like it when I show up or I'm, you know, I I like to pick up the kids on time because I don't like getting a late charge. Those are perfectly okay to say. It's not, you're not admitting the feeling. You're just giving it a different framework. I love that. And one of the words you said, I have to have is a real charge word for me as well. I relate back to when I was given the diagnosis and it was you have and it was just like it was a big sign big red flashing sign on my forehead after that had been pronounced Uh, and I remember that I saying to the doctor "Mm, no I don't Uh, well Sharon you know this is serious come on you're not paying attention or you know I'll just sort of pejorative language about me not taking this seriously and I explained look I understand what you said And I agree there is something that needs to be cleared out of the system, that the system is not functioning properly. (laughs) However, I refuse ownership. I I can have cockroaches, but that doesn't mean I want them, nor do I want to keep them, and that I can get rid of them at some point. The way that it was just pronounced to me in sort of big flashing letters as a a pronouncement from a white coat authority really spoke to my unconscious mind And if I had accepted those words without comment, definitely my unconscious mind would have gone, okay. Exactly. And then you would have plugged into the case scenarios, the case studies and all of it, and and both good and bad that goes with it. Yeah. And you don't have to be limited by that. You can have your own creative solution, which you produced. Yes, absolutely. So I'm glad you brought that up because the word have, have to, should, all of those words are so charged in our world and even when we're healing the word should is another word that I so many well-meaning people in our world whoa you should try this Sharon you should try that you should you know (laughs) and a lot of times just to be gracious it's you you thank them thank you very much for thinking of me that's very kind but in your mind you're like hmm Maybe that'll work or maybe that won't work. Or, you know, you're evaluating whatever the suggestion was in your own mind or perhaps you've tried it. But I know that comes from heart and I know that comes from love. But I always say be very careful when you, quote unquote, want to help someone. Exactly. I have found that it's easier to uh, say to someone, when I experienced this, this is what I did. And that leaves it completely open. And that, again, is not me judging you. And that's the whole idea, that when I say you should, it's telling you that I know better than you. And that's very surprising because in 5D, we all are connected with each other. So we all have access to information. And that's another way you know you're in 5D is when you are sitting there talking to someone and then you tell them something and they say, why did you say that? And they, you respond, well, didn't you just ask me that? And they say, no, I thought it, but I didn't ask you. (laughs) Fascinating. Fascinating. Well, you know, I want to know more about the insights. I guess let's, I'd love a little history because this is so fascinating to me. How did you know that you had access to these records or, I mean, what was, was there a moment where it was in a, 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 I don't know the right words, an awakening, a download, a moment, a uh, insight. I, I'm just yeah. always fascinated. Well, <clears throat> well, first of all, I want to uh, put it in the context of autoimmune disease and say that I will tell you that because of these tools that I have developed, because of the gifts that I have you know, maximized, I was able to attract to me a book that explained to me what was going on with my leaky gut that was causing all kinds of problems with my physical body. 
And it was because of my guidance, my ability to check in and know the answer that I was able to really focus in on solutions that would work for me. Now, how did I get there? When I was a child, I was always plugged in. I was always aware of stuff. I was always attracted to the esoteric. You know, I grew up on a farm and I'm sure there were comic books around. I don't know, but I was never attracted to them. I was too busy reading the lives of the saints. And one time when my mother hid the book and I wasn't where it was supposed to be in the bookcase, I just, you know, kind of went in my mind, well, where's the book? And I could see that it was in a closet on a high shelf. And I went and got a chair from the kitchen, climbed on the chair in the closet, pulled it down. My mother never hid it after that. We never had a conversation after that. But I guess she figured if I knew where it was, that was it. So I, I've always had like a leaning in that direction. But what happened, and I grew, you know, I went in the corporate world. I worked in, in the corporate world in, um, as a manager. I was the nonprofit administrator. I was a CEO of trade associations. And so I have a lot of different skills that are related to the corporate world. And I wanted to develop a way that everyday people would be able to use it, um, whether they were gifted or not, and that I would be able to show them the logical reason, for example, to follow your guidance and to and the logical reason why the system that I developed works, because I think that's very important, but even more importantly, why you should follow your inner guidance. And that is a very simple explanation. Think of you in a room with, maybe you're in a room with some famous speaker that you totally would like to be with. You want to learn from that person and they're just the best. And a fire marshal walks in and said, we have a problem in another part of the hotel, but we're evacuating just in case. I'd like everyone to leave. And you're thinking, no, this is my only time with, you know, Deepak Chopra or whoever. And you don't want to leave, but everybody does. And that's the same with your guidance. It is the latest information on situation normal. So your guidance is, is saying, you know what? Life is exactly the way you expect it, but there's some new piece of information that you need right now. Oh, fascinating. Fascinating. We need to is hold that. that th oh, yeah. We need to hold that thought. We need to take a quick commercial break. But we'll be right back with Marine St. Germain in just a moment and learn more about this because this is just, I'm just mesmerized. So we'll be right back. Life Interrupted Radio will return after these messages from our sponsors. It's great sponsors like these that keep this show coming to you every week. Be sure and stop by lifeinterruptedradio.com to learn more. Do you want to be a better leader? Have better relationships? Become more self-aware? Be a better communicator? Hi, I'm Sharon Saylor, best-selling author, professional speaker, and executive coach. And my life passion is empowering professionals to be the best that they can be. After years of working with professionals, I've discovered the seven things nobody is telling you that can cost you your clients, sales, and even your career. And I want to give it to you free. You've heard my show. You know my passion. And maybe we'll be working together sooner rather than later. So go grab this ebook now to find out the seven things that's costing you big time over at SharonSailor.com forward slash radio gift. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Humanity Healing International is a small nonprofit with a big dream. Since 2007, HHI has been working tirelessly to bring help to communities with little or no hope. Our projects are not broad mandates, nor are they overnight solutions, but they bring the reassurance that no one is alone and that someone cares. To learn more, please visit humanityhealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Hello, I'm Lisa Berry. Join me every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time for Light on Living, a chance to see new, hear different, and feel more as I shine the spotlight on all the ways to lighten the load of life's challenges. Light on Living is your link to that new way you're looking for, that new understanding that will enhance your life, and that positive connection that will support your growth. So join me and you'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. I am Fidel Nshombo. I was born in a city called the Bukavu in the Congo. We were a loving family and then boom, everything that I had disappeared in a single day. People think that when you are a refugee, 
and they resettle you to America, and all your problems are done. They don't understand that that's the beginning of everything. I was not born a refugee. I was made one. It's time we welcome refugee families with open arms. Learn more at EmbraceRefugees.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Welcome back, everyone, to the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio. I'm your host, Sharon Saylor from SharonSaylor.com, and we're here today with the author of Waking Up in 5D. Her name is Maureen St. Germain, and she's been talking to us about autoimmune conditions. Uh, we've been exploring the use of language and understanding what 5D is. Uh, it's just been so fascinating. So, Maureen, let's jump right back in because I want to make sure we have more than enough time for this and share with us some of the unique insights that you've had. I know you said you had an autoimmune condition that you were able to clear up and become a thriver. What are some unique insights that you've had uh, while writing this book and your experience of working with the records that uh, pertain to health and wellness? you can learn how to connect with your higher self and always know what the ideal situation is to eat, to buy for vitamins, which doctor to use. That's been amazing. I have asked my higher self who to help me edit a book. So that's like just the most amazing thing because the answers come in. And I'll, I'll give you a uh, example that happened. The book was already written at this point, but my husband and I were in Seattle, living in Seattle. And I still, we still have a place in New York, but we were living in Seattle most of the time. And we wanted to move to someplace in California. And, but we also were looking at other places. So we made a list. And then one day we were in San Diego on vacation and we thought, heck, maybe we should look at apartments while we're here. We're not ready to move yet, but maybe we should look around. And it was so funny because one of the answers I got in the Akashic Records was this location would be good if you had a dog. And I said to him, I have no idea what that means. So, so some of the insights I have is that people are slipping back and forth between 3D, 3D and 5D all the time. And I want to drop back and say the fourth dimension is this zone of transition. If you know New York, it's like Grand Central Station. No one goes there to spend the night. You only go there because you want to get somewhere else. The same with an airport. You go to the airport to get somewhere else. It's a portal or a nexus. So fourth dimension still has polarity. There's still action going on there, but it's also a place of a lot of emotion. So whenever you're in a big grief or your big happiness, that's very likely that you're vibrating at fourth dimension. And the dimensions are nested like Russian dolls. So the higher dimensions have awareness of third. Sometimes you don't even know you're in 5D until you slide back. Wow. Okay. Now, you mentioned a couple of things that uh, caught my ear for the newbie. You were talking about how you could hear or know your higher self. What if we're just dipping our toe in and go, okay, I agree I have a higher self, but I'm not sure I've ever talked to it. <laughs> uh-huh. Very good. <laughs> what are some steps to uh, know that that's what's going on? <laughs> I developed a very simple technique with five uh, rules that you follow for six weeks. And essentially what you do is you have a meditation where you ask your higher self, okay, I, I'm not even sure you're real, but if you are, can you give me a symbol or signal for yes? And then you do the same for no and neutral. And practically everybody gets something. They'll get a twitch in their eye. They'll get a stomach feeling. They'll get a, you know, a feeling on their shoulder. A few of, a few of us don't get anything. And I have a, a workaround for that. But let's assume that you're one of the majority and you're going to get some kind of symbol or signal. Every once in a while I get a, a, a crackpot who says to this energy, my ear is itching. Settle down. Oh, now my toe's itching. Now, come on. I'm waiting for my signal from my higher self. And then the whole body starts to itch. Okay, okay, okay. I'll take the itchy ear. But most people will just say, okay, fine. This is it. And then you practice for 45 days asking unimportant questions, things that don't matter, like, um, is it in my highest and best good to cook the broccoli for dinner or the carrots? And your higher self knows. And even if you weren't planning on it, your higher self tells you to cook the broccoli. And then someone shows up and you think, oh, I can make a casserole with that. And um, I can serve both of us. 
So something, you get information that you don't know you need, or you ask your higher self, do I go to this restaurant or that? Now, let me back up. The seven rules are, are pretty straightforward, and I'm going to run through them, I think, very quickly to give people an idea. So for, for 45 days, you are asking only yes, no questions. You're not using any other form of divination. So if you use a pendulum or muscle testing or any of that, you set all that aside. You don't ask the same question more than two times. If you don't get an answer, you just eat the bonbons and don't worry about it. <laughs> if you, what if we're hoping for that no answer, that, that like <laughs> make an answer? <laughs> I really want exactly. those bonbons. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So, you shouldn't so be so asking because that's the thing. You have to ask about things you don't care about. And that's what's so funny. You know, it's like the joke. Well, you know, I couldn't really tell if that was a yes or a no. Well, that's just your, you know, your, your tummy saying, yeah, let's do that. That sounds great. Um, and that's okay, but then don't ask. Just ask about stuff you're willing to do. And you're not asking predictive questions. So you're not asking if the light changes. You're not asking if it's going to rain. Instead, you're asking, am I, is it in my highest risk to take an umbrella today? So you're asking the last question. So that's the basic premise. And you do this for six weeks. And what happens is that signal becomes stronger and stronger, strong enough that you can rely on it. And then no matter what information comes in, no matter what, what ideas come in, you can start to say, is this my higher self telling me blah, blah, blah. And your higher self with all that practice, 30, 40 questions a day for 45 days, you have accuracy and it grows and you start to learn stuff that you thought but weren't sure of. And that's amazingly powerful. So if you have a, if you have a partner that you can work, do this with, all the better because then you can really make tracks. Wow, I, I'm totally fascinated. And now you've just took, taken me down a little rabbit hole here. Uh, anybody who listens to the show for very long knows that I just love rabbit holes. But okay, let's say we try this and we're like, wow, and it's we, we're really into it. It's working fabulous. How do we tell our partner? <laughs> Maybe if they're not open to it or something, do you have like an opening line so people are... are um, Maybe they're less open than we are or something. How do we, sometimes I find that true when wanting to try an alternative medicine, medical treatment or something. It's like, oh, okay, how do you break the ice? Yeah, how do you cut through? Um, what I recommend is you simply say, I'm studying a new technique to have a better clarity about my intuition. And then you might say, you know that I have pretty good intuition, right? you know that I'm interested in that stuff, right? You might start with that sentence first and then say, and so I'm going to study this. And, but but we're suppo I'm supposed to play for 45 days. So, um, you know, if you don't care what restaurant we go to tonight uh, and you're looking at a couple of choices, let me ask my higher self and see what happens. And if you really have a preference, then we'll just do what you want. No pressure, no pressure. So you create a fun, uh, festive kind of uh experience. And the whole practice is supposed to be fun. If you get too serious, then you care. And if you care, you're breaking the rules because you're not allowed to care. And the reason you're not allowed to care whether you're right or wrong or whether it's beneficial is because then you're keeping score. And if you're keeping score, then you're not practicing. Your ego is involved again. You see, your drama is back in. Your conscious mind is is overriding everything like, we'll say like usual. <laughs> so, like our old usual. <laughs> In, in our family, where my husband says, you know, I'm looking at this restaurant or this restaurant, which one should we go to? And later we discover, you know, the other one, you know, had had been closed or had, you know, bad reviews or whatever. And it's so fun to see that in retrospect. You don't always see the benefit of the higher self practice initially. And that's part of the experience of the six weeks. Because if you're asking 40 or 50 times a day for 45 days, you're going to have lots of experiences that it is only in hindsight that you will see, wow, my higher self, you know, totally was on it. And what's totally amazing is at the end of that 45 days, your ego or the conscious mind is now aware that your higher self connection has got the goods. And it's kind of like me saying, I've, you know, I've been to the races three times in the last three months and each time I've won over $5,000. You want to come with me next time? 
The answer is yes, <laughs> of course, right? And so that's what happens, you know, if you if you ascribe a value to the ego or the, the conscious mind, that ego is seeing the results, the net results. And what I also tell people is after that 45 days, do your due diligence. You're going to buy a car? Sure, ask your higher self. But don't ask your higher self first. Do your homework. Because the ego and the personality and the conscious mind wants to keep you safe. It wants to help you make a good decision. And if you ignore that, it's going to come back and, and challenge the answer that you got from your higher self. But if you collect the data and then ask your higher self, it's easier to say, okay, it's counterintuitive, but I'm doing it because that's what my higher self says. And that's very, very interesting. Now, let me, just a little moment of clarity here. So let's go to the car analogy again. Now, would I do uh, on two different cars an either or? Do I need the, the, the one or the other? Or is it I research the one, quote unquote, I want or my ego wants? And then ask yes or no. Because I'm thinking that, gosh, if my if I only research one, I'm sort of in, my ego's invested in that one at some level, right? Right. But your ego also might be invested in more than one. So it doesn't matter whether you're interested in one or more than one. It doesn't matter. And your ego could be invested in it. But what happens is once you do that six weeks of practice, you have so much experience with your higher self always giving you a response that's going to get you what you want in the long run, you don't mind choosing the counterintuitive, you know, and you get to that place where the connection with your higher self is so clear that you actually decide, like I did, to make a commitment to always follow your higher self. And that's one of the benefits, because once you make that commitment, you know, there's, there's, uh, you know, you might make a, you might choose not to follow your higher self one time, but you only do it once. Because then you realize ah, that's not worth anything. Um, and, you know, you, you have some outcome that doesn't please you. Um, I will never forget the one time I chose to go against my higher self. And it was to meet with some friends. I was visiting New York. I wanted to see these people. And my, um, my higher self said, I asked, you know, should I go to this art film with my friends? No. And I thought, well, what harm could it be? You know, it's just an art film. And I want to see these people. And it's the only night we can get together. So I went. The, the movie was a dog. We came out. And I said to my friends, you know, I really didn't like that movie. And they said, we didn't either. We wanted to leave, but we didn't want to hurt your feelings. Oh, oh no. Okay. <laughs> so even when it looks like it's going to be a good thing, your higher self knows. And, and here's, the, here's two stories that will really help, you know, bring this home. When I first started doing this work and I was learning how to practice, because I asked my higher self to teach me a method that I could teach everyone else so they could get what I was getting. And, and one time I asked a, about a guy that I met at a party. This was before I was married to my husband. And um, <clears throat> like you, I have lots of things going on in a busy practice. And I met this guy at a party and he was really cute and I really liked him and I could feel his energy all over me and I was all over and I was all over him. And I asked my higher self, you know, if he asked me out, should I go? And the answer was yes. So we went on a date. It was completely flat. Now, I'm I'm pretty uh, focused on the use of my time. And so when I came home, you know, I went to the altar and I said, what was that all about? That was a big waste of my time. And my guidance came in and said, you didn't ask your higher self. And I said, yes, I did. You know, I'm like, so on it. And I was told, no, 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 you asked, but you didn't say higher self. And the little girl in you responded, your ego responded, the sex drive in you responded, you know, all that responded with an enthusiastic yes, which was true because you got what you wanted. You got attention. You got some, you know, yumminess in terms of being around somebody who thought you were sexy and vice versa. And I realized that my higher self would also put my time into that question, into that equation, and would say, don't bother, won't be a good investment of your time. And we've all felt that way, where we've either bought something that was a waste of our time, gone to an event that was a waste of our time, spent time with someone that was a waste of our time. And if we could know ahead of time that it's not in our highest and best good, because we're tired, because we're not going to get what we want, whatever it is, that's pretty cool. And so for, for the 45 days of 40 or 50 questions a day, what happens is we get that practice down. Now let's go back to the car. So the car, 
is um, <clears throat> coming up and maybe, you know, it's the right color. It's got all the right bells and whistles, but maybe it's bigger than what you were expecting to buy. Um, so, you know, there's some disadvantages. Then you look at another car and that's got, you know, it's the right size, but it doesn't have all the fancy stuff that the other one does, but it's really suited for you. But maybe you're not crazy about the color. So then you have a third choice. So you might have all three in front of you and you would simply ask, hire yourself. Is it in my highest and best good to get the black car? No. Hire yourself. Is it in my highest and best good to get this other car, this, this green car? Yes. And then you, if you want, you can still ask about the third car. Is, what about this third car? Is it my highest and best good to get that one? No. But maybe the no isn't as strong. So maybe you go back and you try to buy the green car, but it's gone. So then maybe you go back and you say, okay, now that the green car is gone, is it my highest and best good to get this gray car? Yes. So sometimes you'll get, I mean, you know, as you work with it, you actually get a sensation, you know, strong yes or an ordinary yes. And we all have that in conversation too, right? You know, sometimes when you ask someone, you know, you ask little kids, you want to go to the ice cream parlor and get a treat? Well, they're not going to give you a normal yes. They're going to give you an enthusiastic yes. Good point. Absolutely good point. I, I love that. We need to take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to get more into this enthusiastic yes, understanding that, as well as a few other questions that came up for me. You know me. I love the rabbit hole, guys. We'll be right back right after this commercial break. The best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. What are all the things you witness online in a day? Cats playing piano, selfies on your feed, your friend's picture being turned into a nasty meme that's been shared 50 times, 51, 52. When someone's being bullied online, it's hard to know what to do. Now you can speak up with the witness emoji. It looks like an eye in a speech bubble, and it's in the symbol section near the clocks in your phone. You'll let the world know it isn't cool, and you'll let your friend know you care. Learn more at eyewitnessbullying.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Hi, this is Sharon, and of course you know me from here on the Autoimmune Hour. Recently, I delved into the world of children's fiction with the Pinky Chenille series. If you haven't had a chance to check out Pinky Chenille and the Rainbow Hunters, go over and check it out at PinkyChenille.com. That's Pinky, P-I-N-K-Y, Chenille, C-H-E-N-I-L-L-E.com. Thanks. See you there. Welcome back, everyone, to the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio. I'm your host, Sharon Saylor from SharonSaylor.com, and we're here today with Maureen St. Germain, and she is the author of the brand new book, Waking Up in 5D, as well as a bestseller known, Beyond the Flower of Life, where she uses all her teachings and meditation and research of the ancient truths, including the Akashic Records. And she's been sharing with us how to talk to our higher self and how to know when it's talking, it's answering us. I think oftentimes we do use wish, wishful thinking, and she shared with us the difference of wishful thinking and hearing from our higher and best self. But I did have a question, Maureen. Is there a, what is the difference between under, hearing from the highest and best self, talking directly to the highest and uh, our, our higher self, and intuition? I think of intuition like Kleenex. It's just a generic name that refers to all of it. Sometimes it is your angels that are giving you uh, guidance. Sometimes it is coming from your higher self. And sometimes you pick up energies that are also giving you advice that maybe isn't so good. So that's why you deliberately decide to learn 
how to hear your higher self so you can have the conversation. And then I'm really glad you brought up the whole idea of conversation because initially you're only working with yes, no, and that yes, no signal. But after a while, that yes, no can also evolve to a much bigger expression. And you actually can hear a sentence or a word. You get a big picture. And again, you can say, is this my higher self telling me yada, yada, yada? You know, there was a time years ago when I was driving between Madison, Wisconsin and Minneapolis. And it's a long drive. And it was late at night. And a big semi tractor trailer passed me. And my higher self came in. And that's one of the things that happens after your 45 days and you start working with your higher self on a regular basis. Now you've opened the door. The one-way door is now propped open like a kitchen door that's propped open to a, in a restaurant. And now the, the cook can come out and talk to you. Normally, you were the only one going in and out. But once you've created that connection, then the higher self will just come in and tell you stuff that you need to know. You didn't even know you needed to know. So in this moment, my higher self says, get in to the airfoil or the slipstream, you know, that space right behind the truck where you're using less gas and he's using more. It's not a good thing to do. I knew that what it was, but I also knew it wasn't cool. So I questioned it. I said, is this my higher self telling me? Yes, right now. So this truck that's passing me now, I've got to speed up to stay with him at that level. We're now coming up on an interchange where I'm going to change freeways. And I'm wondering, well, I wonder what's going to happen now. And it turns out the truck ahead of me was going to take that same interchange. So we're now both on the interchange and the truck goes off on the berm at 60 miles an hour. He's still moving like that. And I asked, do I need to say yes, no. So I move over and another car coming the other way comes past us going the wrong way. Oh my. You know, like you, you turn onto another freeway and we come out of that interchange on the new freeway. And I ask again, do I need to stay with this guy? No, you're fine. <laughs> oh my. I don't know that I'm that good of a driver that I could have avoided a head-on collision. And as far as I'm concerned, my higher self was proactive, telling me, stay with this truck and you'll be fine. Another time when I was in France, I was coming through a big section of, of freeway that had been closed. And you had to go through the town and get on the freeway at the other end. And it took me way too long to get to where I was supposed to, to get onto the next place. And coming back, I was kind of paranoid that I would get lost or, or turned around and directions are not my strong suit. And, and I kept asking, you know, what do I do? What do I do when I get to that spot? And I was basically said, don't worry about it. We got you covered. You know, it's kind of like, it's fine. Well, a car passes me just as we're getting, you know, just as we're approaching that exit onto the city. And I was told, stay with that car. And I thought, okay. So, you know, every stoplight, every turn, every which way we went, I stayed with that car. And that car went right back on the freeway, right where I needed to be. And it was just, you know, maybe 10 minutes. Fantastic. I was amazed. <laughs> Fantastic. I have a story similar to that, although uh, a story of not trusting it. A few years ago, I was headed to a party and I was on a road I knew very, very well. And the I'll, say, I'll call it the slow lane. It's a four-lane road, but uh, two and two. And I'll call it the slow lane, the right-hand lane. is very narrow, and I don't like it because I'm always afraid. It's so narrow. You just get so close to the parked cars that it's a little claustrophobic. So I moved into the inside lane. And I remember at that moment, I kept hearing, go back to the other lane. Get back in the... And I'm fighting it, going, I don't like it. The cars are too, you know, the... the parked cars are too close lo and behold someone was turning left I had to stop wait for them to turn left just in time for it to be part of a five car pileup where someone five car oh. five cars rear-ended so that was my turning point where it said yes just do it don't argue just do it <laughs> yeah well now you know you make a very good point and we've all had moments where we've gotten information and we've ignored it. And wouldn't it be nice to be able to have the ability to ask and get that signal? It's just my higher self telling me, yes. And even though it's counterintuitive, I mean, certainly I'm not someone to get into the airfoil. And I'm also not someone to drive on the berm at that speed. But I did because that's what my higher self said. And I didn't do it lightly. I double checked it. And that's the cool thing that you can do. And that, that information is all in that, that second book you named, Beyond the Flower of Life, chapters uh, four and five, full detail, full explanation, 
everything you need to know. And it, it, there's lots of logical reasons why it works, which is very helpful to most of us who are looking to find out, well, how does that work and why does it work like that? It's very, very cool. Yeah, sometimes I'm glad you brought that up because it's called Beyond the Flower of Life and you can get it on Amazon. And I'm glad you brought that up because oftentimes... I don't know. I wasn't raised to believe in any of this. None of my fam- current family members, you know, my close family members do. And, or I'll say the family I grew up with. Um, I've often found that fascinating to me. It's like, how did I end up the way I am <laughs> growing up in the family that I grew up in? Probably similar to, to yours there where you say your mom took this saint book. But I find that fascinating. And I'm glad you brought that up because I think sometimes when it is a new a new system for us, it's a new way of being for us, it's always nice to have some double checks for us to just to I always you know, get beyond the conscious mind that's saying, is this really safe? <laughs> is this safe? <laughs> because so often outside influence is telling us that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that that's, uh, very, very important. And that's the, the other benefit. When you're playing and you're playing around, higher self, should I wear this shirt? No. Should I wear this shirt? And I'm using the word should. But when you actually do the practice, you say the word higher self, is it in my highest and best good to blah, blah, blah. Wear this shirt. No. This shirt. No. This shirt. Yes. Okay, fine. So you wear the shirt. It's a red shirt. And that's the day you still catch up on yourself. Little things like that will start to happen that you get it, that your higher self is way ahead of the curve, way ahead of you, knows what you care about and knows what you want. And it's going to make sure you get it, which is absolutely amazing. I will never forget the time at, when I was working in a um, position as a publicity person and a fundraiser. And I was trying to reach this guy to get in the newspaper, to get a big story for the newspaper, for our agency, our nonprofit. I must have called this guy half a dozen times with no luck. And then I got busy with something else and, and forgot. And then at like five minutes till five, I get a very clear message, call the guy. And I'm thinking, I'm trying to get out of here. I don't want to call the guy. Call the guy. Okay, fine. So I call the guy and he says, Maureen, how did you know to call me now? I am never here at this time. We got our story on the front page of that newspaper, and it was the same day the Pope was in town, and our story was above his. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Now, mm-hmm. I'm I'm curious. Do you, I'm not sure I'll use the right word, so excuse me. Is it possible to live constantly in the fifth dimension, or I mean, I find myself going back and forth all the time. Is is it? Do people? are able to stay in the fifth dimension? You're able to stay in the fifth dimension eventually. So think of it in terms of a teenager growing up. Okay. You know, they do something brilliant and you're so proud of them. And then they do something stupid. And then they do something more brilliant. And then they do something not so stupid, but it's still stupid. And little by little, they get to be mature. And that's us. We're actually doing that exact same formula where we're making a few steps of progress and then we're sliding back and forward. And by the way, that actually matches the formula for the way we evolve in consciousness. It's the formula the way people who buy stocks look for. And it is the formula that is found in all of nature. Wow fascinating. Well, we need to take another quick commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to hear all about Maureen's books, how to get them and her other offerings for us. So everyone stay tuned. We'll be right back. Life Interrupted Radio will return after these messages from our sponsors. It's great sponsors like these that keep this show coming to you every week. Be sure and stop by lifeinterruptedradio.com to learn more. Do you want to be a better leader? Have better relationships? Become more self-aware? Be a better communicator? Hi, I'm Sharon Saylor, best-selling author, professional speaker, and executive coach. And my life passion is empowering professionals to be the best that they can be. After years of working with professionals, I've discovered the seven things nobody is telling you that can cost you your clients, sales, and even your career. And I want to give it to you free. You've heard my show. You know my passion. And maybe we'll be working together sooner rather than later. 
So go grab this ebook now to find out the seven things that's costing you big time over at SharonSailor.com forward slash radio gift. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Change and growth are part of natural life and also part of your spiritual life. Everyone needs support and guidance, especially during life passages. Upgrade yourself with the Ohm Times Experts program. With Ohm Times Experts, you have access to the best intuitive coaches, spiritual teachers, counselors, astrologists, and oracles. Our team was carefully selected so you can trust. Find out more at experts.ohmtimes.com. Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for inspired conversations with publisher Linda Joy on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. Hey, Dr. Phil here. You know, I help people solve difficult problems every day, but one problem has me stumped, childhood hunger. Nearly 16 million children in America struggle with it. Luckily, the Feeding America network of local food banks collects surplus food, giving hope to hungry children and their families. But they need your help. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Welcome back, everyone, to the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio. I'm your host, Sharon Saylor from SharonSaylor.com, and today we're here with Maureen St. Germain, and she's the author of the brand new best-selling book, Waking Up in 5D, as well as Beyond the Flower of Life, and her manifestation book called Be a Genie, which teaches sacred geometry based on the uh, source code and her discovery of the the Phoenix Sequence. I'll get that right. I'm sure there's many, many other things, but tell us more about you and your work and how to find your books and, and let us know uh, what, what you're up to soon. I am teaching at Conscious Life Expo in LA in uh, February. And in the meantime, I have online courses and also courses in New York City. So I'm going to be teaching a class on um, this book, Waking Up in 5D, in Manhattan at the Edgar Casey Center of New York on uh, the 19th of November. Um, and I have freebies on my website all the time. This month, I do have a freebie on uh, becoming younger, and it's called a Youthing Meditation. It's very powerful, and it's only eight minutes long, and it's totally free on my blog, maureensaintgermain.blog. And my website is maureensaintgermain.com. And I have a free meditation on there that uh, I highly recommend. And that's more of a 20 or 25 minute meditation, but it's all about praying for divine government. And I tell people, you know, we all have our criticisms of the government and the governmental leaders. But, you know, we pray for our kids. We pray for our family members and our friends. Why aren't we praying for our leaders? And this particular meditation basically takes you through a construct where you can repeat after me a few very specific set sentences that have to do with, you know, we're asking for angels. We're asking for the divine self to move in a little closer so that whoever it is we're thinking of can be their most divine self. And I think if enough people prayed for that, uh, well, actually, any person praying for it makes a difference. So d- you don't have to worry that you're not that you're only one person, because what even one person makes a difference. And um, I take people through, you know, every level of leadership. You know, your boss, your best friend, your partner, your people at work, and ev- all the politicians all the way up. It's quite fun. It's a lovely guided meditation with background music. It's very nice. Oh, fantastic! Now spell out your website because I know some people might be thinking that it's not, it's spelling out the entire word saint, and it's not. So <laughs> spell out your entire website for people. It, it's Maureen M A U R E E N S T 
G-E-R-M-A-I-N dot com. And if you want to send us an email, you can send it to info at Maureen St. Germain dot com. Those are the best ways to reach us, either email or on our website. And we have an inquiry form. So if you can't remember the name, find our website and, you know, go from there. Fantastic. And your books all available on Amazon or where's the best place to find your books? You can find all of my books on Amazon. You can also find them in the bookstores like uh, Barnes & Noble. Um, This book, Waking Up in 5D, was actually number one for two weeks in um, spirituality and mysticism. Fantastic. Bravo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And the uh, other books are also available on Amazon and on Kindle. So you can get anything you want on your Kindle or at Amazon or at your favorite bookstore. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Maureen, for being our guest and sharing us with us your interesting insights. And I love this idea of learning, spending 45 days to learn to hear and re- relate to our higher self. So thank you so much. I really appreciate you being on the Autoimmune Hour. Everyone, have a great weekend, whatever your adventure. Join me back here next Friday night for another fascinating episode of the Autoimmune Hour. What And enjoy whatever your adventures. See you next time. The information provided on LifeInterruptedRadio.com is for educational purposes only. What you hear, read, and see on Life Interrupted Radio is based on experience only. The information presented here should never be used for any legal, diagnostic, or treatment purposes. Always seek sound legal, medical, and or professional advice regarding any problems, conditions, and any of the recommendations you see, hear, or read here on Life Interrupted Radio. You've been listening to Life Interrupted Radio. To learn more, listen to other shows, and gain free resources that can help empower your life, be sure to stop by lifeinterruptedradio.com. This episode is brought to you by mindfulnessinactionbook.com. 